is time, guys, to get into picks and bans for TSM versus EDG. Looks like Nar and Maokai the first couple bans. So taking out that Nar right away, it has been a strategy that we've been thinking might work against EDG. Take away the Nar, take away the Sejuani, because typically EDG hasn't been quite as strong without a lot of hard engage and crowd control. Okay, Hecarim, the second ban for TSM. Looks like we won't see Dyrus taking that one. It's about time. His, his Hecarim say. has been very underwhelming, a yeah. flashless champion. Uh, but you can see once again, this is heavily targeted as top lane bans once again. This was disastrous against Fnatic when they attempted this strategy. We can probably assume that Cyan's going to be last, so is TSM going to first pick Rumble? Because that's where Koro's going to go on the first uh, round of the draft on the red side. You would think so. Last ban for TSM should tell us quite a bit. Yeah, there's also the fact that in TSM's three defeats, uh, Urgot has been picked by the opponent. Rumble. Every single one of them. TSM ends up banning the Rumble themselves, which would line up a Scion ban, but this is a trade of things. Would TSM just go all out, pick Urgot, and then throw Dyrus to the Wolves? Well, it wouldn't be the first time, would it? <laughs> Not quite. All right, let's see what this last ban is going to be. Long time. Are they going to give the Scion over? New team solo mid. Last ban will be Z Zed. Zed, okay. Surprisingly. Huh. Well, what do you know? Ah, and the Shivana possibly for TSM, a champion that Dyrus, who knows, maybe could see some success on. Smite Shivana, we've seen it work very, very well in other regions. But is it first pick worthy? Do you give up too much? <laughs> there are I would love this. I would love the first pick bard, but we're not going to see it. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. There are so many things that are first there pick worthy. Go. Urgot is the most first pick worthy. It's something that has been first picked against TSM twice so far. Uh, however, this does leave up plenty of things for EDG since there were such heavily focused top lane bans. A Callista still available as well, too. Maybe a Lissandra? You think that's actually got a chance of getting locked in, Monty? Uh, we haven't seen the Lissandra very much post Cinder Hulk, just yeah. because her burst really isn't that effective in the late game. Yeah, she can make some kills, but it just hasn't been that much of a priority. Oh, There's the Callista and the Rek'Sai. So apparently they're comfortable. Shivana and Scion, pretty common top lane picks that are still up. Or will probably be comfortable playing either. You know, yeah. so this does leave a Sejuani or a, you know, or a, a Grungle in the jungle open for uh, Santorin, but it hasn't really been about the champions for him. It's more about, you know, what he's done, or rather what he's not done. He's spent a lot of time just kind of farming and not really being in lane. You think maybe a Nidalee pick might uh, get him back on track? Well, this would certainly force him to be more aggressive. Yeah, it would. And it's a champion he has had some success on in the past. Yeah, Centaur needs something to create more aggression. I, I just want to highlight the Callista play from Deft could end up being one of the most surprising things here at MSI as far as EDG's chances of winning. Him not having Callista in his champion pool during the LPL playoffs was a pretty big <laughs> hindrance to them. And he's had one successful Callista performance. Going to be looking for two in a row. Oh, maybe we'll get to see that Scion picked up for Dyrus. Meanwhile, Corky being hovered over. And an NA. That could be mid or AD carry, I suppose. And there it is, locked in. Dyrus gets the Scion. This is quite standard for TSM. And I'm, I'm glad that they're going back to the things that they won the NALCS with. Yes. There were two games in the finals against Cloud9 when Wild Turtle played Corky in the bottom lane. Urgot in the mid lane is something Bjergsen can dominate the lane with. And Sion is very hard to kill, which is great for them in the top lane. One thing we forgot to mention is LeBlanc is still up and available. Oh, that's a good point. In the mid lane for Pawn. It has been oh. one of his most terrifying champions. Interestingly, we also haven't seen the Kassadin come out yet from Pawn, which was one of his big, yeah. big picks throughout the LPL playoffs and one of his most threatening champions. EDG is on the red side this game. They have that last pick, and they'll probably be saving that. Flashing over the LeBlanc to not remind Bjergsen, and there's the talent. <laughs> Wants to use his, uh, his fancy new skin, maybe. That would be Not cool. on the tournament realm yet, but... Ah, uh, uh, window locked in. All right, so Coral will be able to take that window up to the top lane. Meanwhile, perhaps the Sejuani for Santorin. That wouldn't be too shocking, would it? Mm -hmm. Would not be too shocking at all. They're going for an overall control comp right there. Basically just trying to mimic the things that they played well in the playoffs. To talk about the Mundo pick a little bit from Edward Gaming. If they're able to snowball that lane a little bit, he stands a high chance of becoming highly unkillable. Corky, yeah. not a great tank buster. Urgot, Very true. if he falls behind that, that curve of Mundo tankiness, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. Well, one final pick. He has to pick the mid laner blind, which is really tricky. Go for LeBlanc. Just do it. No, he's got the, he's got the Urgot, man. Oh, he already has Urgot. What am I thinking? Oh, that's true, <laughs> he has yeah. to pick their support. They're going Thresh. <laughs> yeah. It's, 
It's gone. What am I saying? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's okay. Let's just start making. I think we're going to see a Nivea. No. I love this champion. I've loved him from the very moment he came out. <laughs> yeah, and honestly... <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's all it takes. It's all it takes to grab the support back. It's all it should ever take. Bard, in particular, I feel like is absolutely worthy of being played at this event. It's just yeah. the team coordination and individual practice, both of those in conjunction with each other, are required. And teams just haven't had enough time with him yet yeah. to play him at the highest level. He's one of those champions. It's going to take a long time to for teams to actually adopt because playing him in solo queue, it gives you some experience, but he's a champion that you really have to ramp up in scrims. And there is possible Azir for Pawn coming in. This is not a champion that he actually played at all in the LPL playoffs, but has become a, a bit of a power pick at MSI. It really feels like coming into MSI, all the mid laners just tried to add Cassiopeia and Azir to their pool <laughs> because they knew they would be incredibly important here. It's not a bad idea that Azir does get locked in for Pawn. I'm just excited, man. Bard, Bard, finally! <laughs> And TSM putting it all on the line here. Dyrus getting a champion that he's done very well on that mid Urgot for Bjergsen. I'd say going into this one, compositionally, things looking pretty solid for TSM. Yeah, I have no idea how this bar is going to play out. I have no idea how experienced TSM is on it. Yeah. It's certainly a bit of a wild card, but that said, EDG is probably the team that's most used to playing against, against bar. bar. That's a good point, yeah. actually, yeah. Yeah, near there. the end of the LPL regular season, there were a lot of meaningless games because the standings were mostly set, and there was a lot of Bard plays. Especially that from LGD, yeah. So, yeah. a bit interesting. Huh. Very cool either way. As we are moments away from TSM versus EDG. The fans getting pumped. This is going to be an amazing game, guys. The coaches shaking hands. And the game is loading. I want to talk about Bart. Me too. So. <laughs> Let's just talk about Bart all day. Oh, but before we do that, remember, <laughs> at Wall Esports, guys, send your tweets, hashtag TSM, hashtag EDG. Let us know who you think is going to take this one. I think I've got a feeling I know which way the uh, crowd is leaning. Really? Which way? I, I think probably towards TSM, if I had to have to put some money on it. But who wouldn't pick the team that's using Bard? Speaking yeah. of which, Bard. Bard. When he was released. Here we go. Welcome to Summoner's Rift, guys. TSM versus EDG. TSM putting it all on the line with the Bard. So, Jet, you wanted to talk about Bard. Fallen well, armor. When Bard is released. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it almost seemed like he was made for competitive play and specifically lane swaps. Yes. Having the Meep spawn so frequently, the atrociousness of his laning phase, and the ability of him to assist ganks with the magical journey were all things that just looked like they were perfect for lane swapping. Since then, though, he's had a lot of base stat adjustments, and his pick potential has also been greatly increased. The Q packs a huge punch. If he picks up a lot of meeps, he's going to be doing really substantial burst damage in ganks. And as TSM has generally found all of their success in the lane swap, that's the game we're most likely going to be seeing here, is Lust Boy trying to go around, meeping it up, and getting the right ganks off. Yeah, starting with the cloth armor, too. Of course, Bard does have the sustain a little bit more, so you have a few more options. But I wonder if there's a specific, more specific, I should say, level one plan right here. I got this one, man. Cloth armor first, you can go into uh, a fast seeker's arm guard into a first <laughs> item zone, you see? I know this build by heart. A lot of people early on with Bard were actually starting coin because he's not really going to be a laner. So yeah, they, weren't, they didn't really care about any type of lane presence item, and it was mainly just about roaming around. Here with the cloth armor, it would give him a little bit more combat effectiveness, but the main thing it does is it gives him the goal to actually start with that sight ward. So mm -hmm. we'll see what he tries to do with that because the uh, early game action has been pretty subdued. Oh, clearly, you know, TSM has a plan coming into this one with a bit of a surprising buy early on for Lost Boy. We'll see what they can do to put it into practice. All right, so this is a pretty common start among Chinese teams with the jungler actually burning the smite onto the Gromp right there. We see it more in the China region than we see in most other places. Clearly, of course, does have that sustain as well. Dyrus will be committing wolf suicide. That doesn't count for first blood, though. So <laughs> nope. we're safe. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> there we 
we go. Just getting that quick level two from beyond the grave. Here we go. TP right into the bottom lane and onto Callista. However, Rek'Sai is going to be moving down to the bottom side of the map. Koro did start up in top, so he's going to be recalling immediately. Yeah. And only three people for a possible dive of harassment. Not probably going to be enough. And there's the TP into top. Well, the green ward that Lust Boy had purchased has been placed on the red buff of Edward Gaming, so they will know at this point. Uh, Ooh. Green Love is just going for the own red buff. Hits his first Q. That's got to be a good sign, right? Oh, a lot of damage on the pawn. Bjergsen owning up in the mid lane already. Look at that. I mean, Bard's land is first Q in lane. They basically won. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think that's that's all the victory you need. Get the snare. Get the win. So will they go for a gank on a Bjergsen right here from the Raptor pit? Maybe. Uh, so put a little pressure on, but Bjergsen playing it safe. He's playing the top side right now. And Clearlove doesn't have a lot of health. He can get some back from his passive after he burrows, but doesn't look like they're going to try that gank. Meanwhile, Dyrus farming under turret here. Do you think they're going to try to dive the Scion? Both Ooh, top laners left on an island. Both Mundo and Scion oh, are in here danger we go. Of gank. It's all about who gets the aggro first yep. and how they execute. On to clear love, Mako take on the right now. Dyrus yeah. trying to get that stun. Dyrus in a lot of trouble. And there is a red for the first blood. Def taking it. Dyrus just getting a bit of farm before he goes back to the fountain. But yet another first blood. That's four out of TSM's five group stage games now. Yep. But well, there, there was no protection for him on that side, especially oh. especially when TSM placed the ward in Clear Love's red buff. They knew exactly the jungle pass they were doing. They knew exactly what was at stake. And Dyrus either has to either has to abandon the farm at the turret oh, or yeah. risk getting dove. And the <laughs> dive was well executed by EDG. Of course it was. They're a great team. Dyrus is going to die. Wow, Lost Boy really putting the hurt on the coral here. This is what you do, man. This is Bloodthirsty Sport. Just stay in auto. Look at that. Oh, it's 1v1 him, yeah. Well, maybe not. Maybe not now. <laughs> no, stop 1v1ing. They're okay. All right. We're okay. Yeah, I mean, in an ideal world, they're now able to deny Coral, but Bart took so much damage here, and Coral's already level 4 with Smite up, so if he actually wants to, he can just go jungle right here. That's the benefit of taking Smite if True you're not enough. going oh. to be punished with ganks. Bjergsen knocked up, taking a lot of damage here, waiting to use those summoners. Didn't need to use either one, so EDG making an attempt there, but Bjergsen in a safe spot. Oh, taking a little bit of damage on the way out, though. And one thing uh, that I haven't really seen is the Smite top Mundo. It's actually mm. not very common among our Smite top laners. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought that somebody might play it at some point, but to date, I haven't oh, wow. seen it. The one place it was very popular of all places, the NA Challenger scene, Seraph played a lot of it. Interesting. And took over a bunch of games. Oh, Dyrus in a little bit of trouble. Dodges clear love. Mako coming in, though, from behind. Will they try to dive this again? The minion wave, I think, is going to say yes. Dyrus already down at half health, still just level four. And there he goes yet again. Kill number two this time, going over to clear love. EDG is completely right to be doing this. Yeah. Centaurin is never Where is on the guy? same side of the map as Dyrus in this tournament. Especially, you can either support him with Bard with health packs and journeys to get out or have that. You have to make at least some kind of counterplay yeah. because Dyrus does not have smite. He can't jungle on his own. So someone on the team does have to go and help Dyrus. That is now his second death under the turret. And really, Lustboy hasn't been doing a whole lot in lane. There's not no. really a lot of reason for Lustboy even to be on the top side of the map at this point in time. Because Santorin hasn't been going for the dives, they haven't been setting him up in response. We should see Bard moving around the map more instead of just standing in topside and getting hit by cleavers. Well, yeah, that's the whole idea is you start to chain those chimes. You can really move around the map fast in that lane swap. Maybe go save Dyrus, you know, maybe make a gank in mid or something like that. They should be doing more with this Bard. And Instead, uh, it's Death not, is now level it's, six. It's not Dyrus' fault this keeps happening, but what do you expect? A nice death sentence onto Dyrus. That's three kills already. Man, TSM really just leaving Dyrus out to dry yet again. So it's a little bit Dyrus' fault, well, but it's a it's a right. systematic problem right here, and EDG is right to exploit it as every team has done so far at the midseason Invitational. What do you do if you're Dyrus in this situation, though? If you know your team isn't going to come and help, do you still get the farm as you can? Or Specifically what? when EDG is coming down like that, you have to avoid the lane. You ask your jungler for double jungle, or you just go and try and push another lane with your team. You group up, 
three or four people in the top side, try and push down Mundo's turret and assist in an enemy dive if you know the enemy is going to be putting three people bottom dedicated to kill you. Well, you notice there just aren't any, any wards as well, too, to warn him that people are coming in. I mean, you do have information from the other lanes, of course, too, but not really anything in his side of the jungle to give him that little bit of extra info. Well, it's tough because where do you put your money at that point, right? Do you yeah. use the meager amount of income that you have on wards for yourself? Yeah, very true. Yep. Wow, uh, Deft actually with a pretty quick rune in Hurricane. Well, he has gotten two kills and an assist at seven minutes. Yep, and a dragon and a turret. Now, he has fallen behind in CS as a result of this. They've been actively pushing the wave. If we look at what's happened in the top side, TSM has been freezing for the most part, trying to play Quirky back to his turret, which does make Blessed Boy's presence up there increasingly unnecessary. Um, but at the same time, they have managed to actually pick up a lot of farm onto the AD carry. Yeah. Yep. And they're trying to hit... The nice thing about Corky in this composition that TSM is running is it kind of gets them over the hump into the late game. First off, you have some nice mid-game siege with the long-range poke from the Urgot and from the Corky, so you might be able to take down some early towers, and it's a little bit of an insurance policy getting in late. But this Mundo with this challenging smite is going to be pretty terrifying, and Deft already in the top side starting wow. to take more towers. Oh, yeah. Smite Mundo in the late game turns into a total monster. Oh as I've seen when Seraph has been able to play it. Yeah, and it's also just Cinder Hulk combined with the AoE from Mundo is extremely good at split pushing. Mm. And there's not a really good answer as to who is going to deal with the split pushing from TSM. Yeah, at this point, TSM needs to control this and find a way to fight around the next dragon for the most part. Or they can need to send an overwhelming force top lane and push this down. But since it's already a Hurricane Callista, you're not really pushing against that very easily. The, the options are very limited right now. Right, and the nice thing for Deft is he can stand up here and continue to clear waves. Meanwhile, Wild Turtle has to use mana to actually clear those waves effectively. Yeah. So eventually he's just going to run out of mana if nothing else changes, and uh, it'll be pretty hard. I would say so. And we'd mentioned the CS earlier with Deft falling behind. Well, he's pretty much caught right back up again by rotating into that top lane. So everything fine at the moment, and already a 3k gold lead at nine minutes. One lane that has been pretty much completely unfocused this game is the Pawn versus Bjergsen matchup. Bjergsen yeah. has been oh. decimating people early in CS. Oh and boy, and continues to die in his Bjergsen a little bit of trouble. Position reverser may save him. He's a little bit tankier. So many Sand Soldiers, though, and Bjergsen getting low. Has to burn that flash. Oh. Love flashing to chase Bjergsen with that shield. Looks like he'll just barely manage to escape. Meanwhile, up in the top lane, TSM trying to make a play onto Deft and Mako. Mako pulled in, though. There we go. Oh, nice play on the Lust Boy. A lot of trouble. Magical journey to escape. Oh, Deft, he's taking a magical journey too. And it's going to be a journey to the death for Lost Boy. Maybe, maybe. Oh! oh makes it out. He uses the barn ult to stop Deft Back just in. long enough. Bjergsen in trouble in the mid lane. And he will finally go down as Pawn grabs that kill. A flurry of events. Santorin's ultimate flew wide in that engagement as the Lantern and the Fates Call are just a lot to keep up with. Yeah. Last boy with a miraculous escape, but they still end up losing Bjerg in the mid lane. A nice, nice decision by Clearlove to go here back. Go. And, and here they go. Got Journey. Deft in a little bit of trouble now. Lust Boy is still low, and Deft may try to claim a kill. He'll get Ooh. an easy one. Oh, that was painful. Oh, wow. How many can he get? Hit with that death sentence. There's the double, and he's not done yet. Teleport coming in for TSM. Dyrus trying to turn that one around. Coral there as well, too. Deft getting Deft. low. Dyrus gets the shutdown. Turns back onto Coral now. Mako trying to help out, but Dyrus will finally go down. Not quite going to catch up to Coral for that. Well, well, that was interesting. It's mostly a magical journey into the afterlife. I, I know. It's not quite the, the magical journey, really, is it? It's kind of a kind of a deadly journey. The most unfortunate thing about all that is now... The most unfortunate thing is Dyrus reset his bounty. Uh, it was actually yeah. fairly meaningless for EDG to continually kill him until he gets a kill after that teleport, and immediately Coral picks up a fat 300 gold there, uh, and that'll only extend EDG's lead higher and higher. Very true. Oh, Pawn coming in onto Bjergsen. Bjergsen in a little bit of trouble. Lost White comes in to try to save him. Looks like Bjergsen might get a dodges that death sentence. And EDG going to need to back up just a bit. EDG's tried that same gank a couple times now. It's the second time. And each time Bjergsen gets over the wall with the position reverser. So 
Not really sure that's going to work as long as Bjergsen has that ultimate available to him. Bjergsen is holding on as best as he can right yeah. now. I was going to say before all the ganks happened that this was actually the first time someone has out CS Bjergsen at 10 minutes, and that was majorly without jungle assistance. I do have to credit Pawns Azir pretty heavily here, a pick we haven't seen him pull out in competitive play. Doing quite well against Urgot, who is a tremendous lane bully early on, and this game is very quickly getting out of control. Yeah, certainly starts to look that way. EDG coming in to claim their second dragon. Nothing TSM can really do about it. Osboy getting closer. But no, no plays really to be made. TSM trying to put a little bit of pressure onto the mid lane. That is about it. Big gold lead for EDG right now. And for TSM to come back, they're going to need to have some pretty sick team fights. And Deft, uh oh, chasing down Wild Turtle. Where's that Valkyrie cooldown? Wild Turtle taking a lot of damage. Will the Rend finish him off? There's the flash. Deft waiting for the whole Rend. So close. Meanwhile, Coral takes down that turret up in top lane. And it looks like they may lose one in bot as well, too. Deft trying to get closer to Lost Boy. Thrown in with that Fates call. There's a nice play. Lost Boy grabbing the Death Sentence. He's in the box now. Tempered Fates going to save him for just a moment. Santorin comes in. Lost Boy Magical Journeys right into Clear Love. Oh, no. Goodbye, Bard. He's getting a little bit low. Meanwhile, Deft. Oh, oh Deft <laughs> dies to the turret and a little bit of help from Wild Turtle. Meanwhile, Mango <laughs> getting taken out as well. Clear Love managed to get the kill on Lost Boy, but uh, that may have been a little bit too far from EDG. I think EDG may be going for a few style points yeah. right here because diving between two turrets at 13 minutes into this game is not... The most measured play that we've seen right here at Everybody TSM. Everybody just wants to get closer to Bard, you know? <laughs> it's like, about, oh, it's so awesome. It's about sending a message sometimes. We That's talked right. EDG, even with the SKT game where they were defeated, was averaging 0.76 kills per minute. They're yeah. trying to keep up this pace right here and just make a statement to the world that they are a very good team. A very killy team. A very killy we, team. Uh, yeah. Well. That was a phrase. They so, are a very killy team. Very killy indeed, I agree. A little too killy right here, though. Yep, Lost Boy. <laughs> Launching himself into the inhibitor turret. And credit to Lost Boy here, the delay on both of them just long enough yeah. to magical jury himself out of there. And then also distracting Rek'Sai long enough to make it so Wild Turtle and Santorin don't die right here. Deft jumping back into the turret. <laughs> Poor Callista play, I would <laughs> yeah. have to say. Yeah, that's not maybe the best idea. You you do have a chance to maybe dodge some of those rockets jumping side to side instead. <laughs> no, man, you got to go right back into the turret <laughs> the style points. Hey, what's Callista's favorite restaurant? IHOP. Oh, God. <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. I haven't been booed by thousands of people at once in a while, so I had to, I had to do that. Thank you. If there is a time to say that joke. <laughs> that was the right time. <laughs> Looking for that sponsorship. Lost Boy takes the magical journey back through the bot lane. I can't say that enough. Dyrus played under turret. He's filled with spears. Ouch. And Deft is putting a ton of pressure onto this turret. Oh, here comes Santorin. But not able to quite do anything at the moment. Lost Boy in a little bit of trouble. Wild Turtle. There's a tempered fate again. Coral's like, thanks, man. I need to catch up. Oh, Clear Love gets the kill there. And Wild Turtle backing off with that Valkyrie. Yeah, this part pick, I hate to say it, may not be working out too well. Oh, clear love all over Wild Turtle. Easy kill there, but here comes Bjergsen for a bit of revenge. Will he get it, though? I don't think so. There's a kill for Pawn. And this one is turning into a bit of a rout. Yeah, it certainly is. And what we saw on the top side was Santorin didn't quite have his ult off cooldown yet, so Def wasn't punished for being a little bit too far forward there. 7,000 gold already. Man. 15 minutes into the game. Well, ED EDG actually had a, it was a 16,000 gold at the 20 minute mark against Besiktas. They have been crushing people in the group stage outside of that SK Telecom game. Yeah. Pawn is incredibly strong on Azir right now. Azir as well, an amazing turret pusher. Can He can use his Sand Soldier directly on the turret to chunk a bunch of health out of it, as you saw him do twice there. That was a and lot. And he takes that whole turret down by himself. And that's a 4-0 turret lead now. Meanwhile, some fighting up in that top lane. Santorin uses his ult to try to escape, actually. Dyrus still tangling with death for now. Mako coming in. There's a teleport for Coral as well. Lustboy takes Take the it. magical journey through. They could have chased, thought maybe it was a trap. It kind of was. As Dyrus loading up the sun, Coral magical journeys right into it, but no follow-up for TSM. Yeah. Magical journey just makes games like 10 times more entertaining. <laughs> Yeah, you have to be careful, though, because Bard will line up that Q on the other side and exactly. just stun you straight into the wall, so. Yeah. It's actually one of the few times we've seen some reserve from EDG. Yeah. yeah. 
Not just just all dogpiling through the, the magical <laughs> journey. Why not? To be fair, Carl still took it knowing full well what was on the yeah, other side. Did. He did. <laughs> he just knew he was strong enough to not get punished by it, it at was, the moment. It was a good setup. You know, Dyrus loading up that uh, max Q as well, too. They stunned him, but hard to finish off a Mundo once you've got him in position. Yeah, this Mundo getting pretty darn scary, too. Yeah, at this point, we need to start looking at the rest of MSI and the games that we have coming up, too, because at this point, TSM has one win against Besiktas. In order for them to make it out of group stage, they would need to win this game and then have Fnatic lose to Besiktas. But EDG, I'm going to say they're going to win this game. I think that's a pretty uh, safe bet there, Jeff. I could say it. I think EDG is going to win this game. Bjergsen in a little bit of trouble here. Thus, furthering that uh, hypothesis, perhaps. He'll fall as well. So it actually does make the next game Fnatic has against Besiktas pretty important as well, because in a world where Besiktas beats Fnatic, that puts three teams on one win, and we would actually still have a three-way tie. <laughs> <laughs> the best of the worst for MSI. <laughs> It's still a possibility that we're going to have coming up here in EDG. It's possible. They're going to try and end this game as quickly as possible. Yep, going in onto this inhibitor turret in the mid lane, doing a lot of damage to it. Does DSM have any sort of Recor Santorin? Has that ult? Oh, here comes Dyrus. Right oh, through no! the middle, doesn't hit anybody. And now TSM, they can't follow up because there's nothing to follow up on. Pawn coming in for a bit more damage. They're going to take out Ghost Dyrus. Tempered Fate freezes people up for just a moment, but again, no damage really. Coral getting a bit low. Oh, the wild turtle grab of the death sentence taken down by Clearla. Pawn comes in. Emperor's Divine pushes Bjergsen back out. Another kill for Clearla. What a hero and a flash from death to take down Lustboy. And it looks like EDG is ready to end this one as quick as they possibly can. They took so much damage from the inhibitor turret that time, but not a single one of them ended up falling. They're just going to run back for Dragon 3. Well, tempered fate. Uh, not doing the best things in combination with Sion <laughs> Ultimate. He kind of moved through, right through everybody, straight into the Azir turret during that siege. But uh, man, Pons, I helped. Pons' Azir mechanics are incredibly smooth to travel to those Sand Soldiers and then knock people back with the Emperor's Divide. He yeah. really has those combos down nicely. And we actually had some internal questions about Pons' champion pool coming into MSI because we were looking at the champions he was playing against LGD in the LPL Finals, and they were all very assassin-based picks, oh, very oh. low wave clear, and not really playing into the control mage style that we saw out of SKT in the LCK finals, the Azir and the Cassiopeia. Hmm. And we we're also thinking, like, how hard would it be for Pawn to go back to these picks? Because back in the day, he was an Orianna player, very good one at that. And yep. he should be able to pick up those control wah, mages. Wah. Running straight <laughs> through the Zonia's men right there, to his demise. Yep through one turret into another. And then just EDG are so far ahead at this point. You can watch everyone taking their turn at dealing with that turret laser over and over again. No one actually falling down. Oh, he's EDG. Well. Yeah, takes an easy Baron, and now they'll move back into TSM's jungle. Coral has so much money right now. He hasn't been back to shop in a really, really long time. He thinks this is ARAM, man, where he has to die to go back and get items, 2, apparently. 2,400 gold currently yeah. on Coral. Maybe time to uh, hit the B button there, Coral. Well, you got you can, as long as you can keep sustaining with that Mundo alt. I guess. I mean, why not? Who needs items when you can lock in Mundo? Another turret going down. EDG continuing to push towards what will probably be the end of this game fairly soon. They've got the Baron buff. They've got all the power. Coral, though. Oh, here comes Dyrus coming in, and he does hit a couple people, but where's the follow-up? Clear love. Blocking a lot of stuff. Dyrus gets flayed back in, filled with spears yet again. He is going to go down. That is that tempered fate used again by Lost Boy. Didn't really get a whole lot done as it hasn't gotten a whole lot done all game. There goes the inhibitor turret. Whoa, Pawn bending the Sand Soldier to try wow. to get in on Sand Torrent. And look at that, flash test sentence doesn't connect with Wild Turtle. I could watch Pawn play Azir all day. Man. So bending the Sand Soldier like that is really, really difficult. Yeah. More difficult than an insect move would be on Lee Sin. I've talked to a lot of people who've tried to pull it off. You have to get the timing perfectly, because yep. the way it works is you place your Sand Soldier, you then E towards it, and as you're about to connect, you Q it forward. So you end up bending yourself to whatever direction that is going eventually. If you do not get the timing exact, it doesn't work, and you end up just looking like a fool. Yeah, well, Pawn's definitely not looking like a fool this game. 2-0-5. Only three deaths total on the EDG side of things. 
as they're an enormous amount of gold up, about 13,000 right now. And see, Jeff, just going for the QSS as well right afterwards, taking yeah. no chances against Bjergsen. Makes sense. So, also, the time in which EDG wins this game is not without consequence. In the event of a three-way tie for first, which would happen if AHQ beats SKT later, the the way the three-way tie works is the two teams that have the slowest time oh in their boy. victories play each other. Yeah. So the team that wins the fastest would actually get the higher in that mini tournament. Well, Santorin lands the ult on a couple of members of EDG. Bjergsen's still in a lot of trouble here. Lost Boy trying to save people. They do take out Bjergsen. Now Santorin in a little bit of trouble. Another kill for Clearlove. Clearlove, 8-0 and 7 this game on that Rek'Sai. Crazy stat line for him as we near the end of this game. Pawn just bending those soldiers for fun, man. Just showing off at this point. Mako taking some turret damage, barely escaping with his life here. And Wild Turtle, here comes Dyrus. What can he do? Oh, pushed back by the Emperor's Divide. Immediately and nearly blown up at the same time. Mako still sticking around, throwing out those death sentences. And Deft hopping his way towards another kill on the inhibitor down in bot lane. All three inhibitors are going to be down at this point, and the low health on EDG should be a bit of a concern normally, but these guys just don't seem worried about anything at the moment. Pawn, uh -oh. to Zonia, though. Uh-oh, yeah, a lot of damage. Dyrus gets the kill there. Now EDG on the run. Tempered Faith, it lets TSM catch up. They're gonna kill Deft as well. Bard making things happen. Clear love trying to get away. We got one good Bard all guys. We got one good one this game. I'm happy. Oh, Santorin comes in. They're going to try to get a kill on the Coral here as well, too. Oh, yeah. right into Lust Chase. Boy. Lust Boy oh. and Bloodthirsty can't quite finish off Mako. Going to try to make a play. Wow, Magical Journey. And Got him. Boy flashes for the Bloodthirsty kill on the Bard. Coral still trying to move up. And here comes Clear Love. Nice double knockup. Wild Turtle. They still haven't killed him. Oh. Oh. Are you kidding me? Well, I don't even know. I'm done. I'm done, guys. Clear Love. Santorin coming in. There we go. Finally, finally gets the kill on Okoro, but gives the double over to Clearlove. At this point, it's just a melee, man. I don't think anyone's yeah. trying to end the game now. It's just Fight Club. Brawl time. It's yep. the small things that count in this you game. You already broke the first rule, Doa. I, I talked about Fight Club. <laughs> I always do that, man. I'm the worst Fight Club member. Clearlove didn't even bother to go back. He just wants to try to 1v1 Bjergsen with a half health, apparently. TSM's inhibitors oh, are cycling on. alive and dead right now, so EDG yeah. can waltz in pretty much whenever they want here. Clearlove doesn't want to stop. Bjergsen's like, this may be a trap. No. Nope. Oh, here it comes. Clearlove getting low. Oh, wow. Deft is like, no, that kill is mine. Oh, goodbye, lost boy. Pawn taking another one, and now EDG maybe thinking about ending this one. Maybe thinking about just getting more kills, too. I think maybe more kills is the way to go. Hey, they're, they're keeping yeah. up their kills per minute stat. This yeah. is more than 0.76 kills per minute. They're going for more one. than a kill Oh, this man, game. another Emperor's Divide. Knocks Wild Turtle right into Clear Love for kill for Wild Turtle. Thank you there. Dyrus gets pulled in with that death sentence. Doesn't land that stun. Meanwhile, Deft. Santorin just trying to take down Pawn. The turrets are getting taken down in EDG, ready to end this one. There goes the Nexus. Now that both Nexus turrets have been taken out, Santorin just hanging out. Mako tangling with him. There's the Flay and Def wants another kill. Oh, Wild Turtle blew up Pawn. And apparently this game is not going to end yet, I guess. Wild Turtle backing off now as Coral jumps in there. Uh-oh, Corky in trouble. Gets taken down, and now the Nexus finally focused. 27 kills in 25 minutes for EDG as as they take the game over TSM, it's over. And the thing about EDG and the style of play is when you individually outclass your opposition roll by roll, you can continue to play this very grinding style because you can bank, you can bet on the fact that you'll outplay and get a gold lead and keep on expanding that lead through further outplays and then itemization. And right. the thing is, especially in this game, EDG also won the strategic match as well. They were able to isolate Dyrus down in that bottom lane, no support, continually attacking that weakness again and again and again, putting Dyrus out of the game and also snowballing Clear Love ahead. At that point, they could use Deft and Clear Love to just take over the rest of the map. So they had the mechanics, but they also had the strategy this time around. Yeah, true enough. Well, another win for EDG, and they're in prime position now to move on potentially to the playoffs tomorrow. Another strong showing from them, and another kind of puzzling game from TSM. There's going to be 
a ton of questions raised back in North America and within the TSM camps about why yeah. this tournament went so poorly. One and four right there, four and one. Both these teams' group stages are now done. And it wasn't just one and four either. It was crushing, crushing defeats. So, yep. And now, guys, it's time to head over to the analyst desk for a closer look 